Hey up everyone, right, so if you've been following, I suppose, a majority of my thread posts and stuff, I suppose even some of my videos that I've been putting out here as well, right, you can kind of see that, like, my position on the whole Israel-Palestinian thing has completely and utterly changed. I'm no longer calling for a two-state solution, I'm calling for the absolute destruction of Iraq, Israel. And that we need to get rid of Israel because Palestinians can never be safe while ever Israel exists because they will always attack them. And so that's kind of been my position. Um, but I, I said on all of my posts that, like, I don't really understand how that works, right? Do you know what I mean? Like, I thought, I thought to myself, it's probably unlikely that most of the Arab countries are going to go and invade Israel because... Israel will just use nuclear weapons, you know, I mean, we know they've got nuclear weapons, we know they don't give a fuck about civilian deaths, they're committing a massive genocide inside Gaza, and so using nuclear weapons, how is that any different for them, do you know what I mean, and I have absolutely no problem with using these things, and so that was kind of my position, I was like, yeah, we need to get rid of Israel, but I'm not really quite sure how that would work, right, but then I just saw this post, um that had a lot more information and stuff that made me think, actually this could work, right? So, so like when you look at, when you look at Palestinians, you think Hamas, Hezbollah, right? Yeah, these are the two major armed forces that are fighting against Israel, right? And you look at Hamas and you look at and you look at Hezbollah and who are their backers? Where do they get all their weapons from? Thousands of missiles got sent over into Israel. Where did they come from? Yeah. Hamas didn't build them themselves. They've not got any massive military um, construction facilities available to them. So they clearly didn't create these missiles. Where do all the missiles for, ha for Hezbollah come from? They come from Iran. Now the thing is that like... Iran's like kind of a bit different from the rest of the Arab world. Well, they're not Arabs, do you know what I mean? They're not Arabs. They're Muslims, but they're Shia Muslims and all the other Muslim countries that are all Sunni. But they're in a kind of weird position. So the thing is that the United States gave a threat to Iran saying, basically, if you attack any of our positions, then we'll attack you, right? So there's a lot of stuff going on in Syria where there's a lot of Iranian forces and stuff and Israel has been bombing them. And the Americans have started bombing them. And you kind of think, like, whatever, you're fucking poking the tiger here, right? Do you know what I mean? You're basically, like, forcing Iran to get involved because you keep attacking them, blowing up their things. How do you expect them not to get involved? Do you know what I mean? They've got Hezbollah and Hamas, who they, who they support... How do you not expect them to get involved, right? But one of the things that happened in Iran was they did what's called raise the black flag, right? So the black flag is a call to all Muslims to go and fight in a war, right? <clears throat> and, is, and Iran raised the black flag and they had over 2 million people sign up to go fight in Palestine. This is amazing, this is amazing. So as I've been calling on all Arab nations to get your fucking armies together, get into fucking Palestine, defend the Palestinians from the Israelis, go to war against them, invade Israel, destroy Israel, get rid of them. That's been my call, right, recently, is that's what I've been saying should happen. But like I was saying before is, yeah, you can understand it, why they're a bit hesitant is because Israel will just use nuclear weapons. But one of the amazing things that um, came out of this to me was that, like, so Iraq is basically a Shia country now, the same as Iran, but they just they've just um, recruited hundreds of thousands of Iraqis to go fight against Israel, and they've all moved right up to the Israeli border, right, and they're they're fighting against the Israelis over the side of the border. So you've got Iraqi militants there. You've got two million Iranians who've signed up for this for, to, to go to war. But then also what's been really useful here is Pakistan, which is also a nuclear power, has said to Israel, if you use nuclear weapons, then we will use nuclear weapons against you. Right? This is a massive deterrent here. 
So the whole thing why the Arab nations have not got involved is being scared that Israel will use nuclear weapons. But now they've got another nuclear power, another Muslim nuclear power on their side saying, if you use nuclear weapons, we will use nuclear weapons against you, right? So you've got to think that, um, that that's a bit of a deterrent to... Um, that's a bit of a deterrent to Israel to use nuclear weapons because if they use them, then Pakistan will just nuke Israel and they'll do, they'll fall victim to the same kind of weapons that they're going to be using. This kind of changes the entire dynamics of what's going on here, right? So if Israel is being deterred from using nuclear weapons by Pakistan threatening to nuke them, then that makes it a lot easier for the Arab nations to go and invade them. Do you know what I mean? So therefore, they don't have to be scared of Israel using nuclear weapons against them because Pakistan will use them against them as well. And that'll just end up in a complete sea of madness, to be honest. But um, but yeah, this is, this is where we are right now. Uh, I think the fundamental balance of power has changed where Iran is mobilizing two, two million people. We've got the Iraqi Shia militias um, going up to the Israeli border. And we've now got Pakistan threatening Israel with nuclear war, if that's the way that they go. So hopefully, hopefully we might be able to see a bit of a change going on in the Arab countries. Maybe they will invade. Maybe, no, they don't even have to invade Israel. They just have to go to Palestine and defend them from the Israelis. So if the Israelis start sending tanks into Palestine, there's an army there waiting to fight them and to stop them and to push them back. But things have changed massively. Um, and I can say I only find this massively encouraging.